This is Owens Corning Energy Complete with flexible seal technology, whole home insulation and air sealing system. Energy Complete is a high performance system that guards against conditions that rob homes of energy and comfort through the use of safe and environmentally friendly materials. It combines Energy Complete spray foam with Energy Complete fiberglass blown in insulation to dramatically address the problem of air infiltration. This system will allow you to offer your customers a total solution for making their home more comfortable and energy efficient. In this video, we'll show you the Energy Complete spray foam with flexible seal technology at work and we'll demonstrate how to set up, operate, and clean the system. Safety should always be your first priority. The personal protective equipment or PPE required for operating this system includes chemical gloves, goggles or a face shield, a long sleeved shirt, a dust mask if the installation site is dusty, hard hats or steel toe shoes when required by local building regulations, and disposable coveralls if desired. These are the tools and supplies that you will need to take with you to the job site. The whole house air sealant machine, complete with hose and spray gun, an air compressor if not installed on the machine, an electrical generator if no power is available at your site, extension cords, an adequate supply of solutions part A and B. Four buckets of part A are required for each bucket of B. Cleaning solution, several empty one to five gallon plastic buckets, open end or adjustable wrenches to use in cleaning the spray gun, the whole house air sealant cleaning kit, a 5 16 inch nut driver, a small slotted screwdriver, plastic drop cloth, a large piece of cardboard, an electric or battery operated drill with an agitator attachment, paint stir stick, plastic film to cover all doors, windows, tubs and showers, or finished floors, a stapler for attaching the plastic film, and any ladders that may be required. When you arrive at the job site, you will need to locate a clean, leveled area in which to set up the Energy Complete sprayer. Typically, a garage will work well. Take a moment to clean up any loose debris. Place a plastic drop cloth on the floor. Remove the machine from your vehicle and place it in the center of the plastic. The machine is typically transported with a hose and electrical cords wrapped around the handle. Unwrap the hose and set it aside. Take the electrical cords for the pump, compressor and heater if used and connect them to a 110 volt outlet. Before you can foam the hose, you will need to apply a protective plastic film over all windows and doors to protect against overspray. You should also cover tub and shower units or other finished items that are installed. If you're working with a partner, they can take care of this while you continue to prepare the materials. If not, you will need to complete the site preparation and then return to the machine. The next step is to prepare the spray materials. From this point forward, be sure you're wearing eye protection and chemical gloves. There are two separate solutions that need to be thoroughly mixed before being used. The B side is mixed with a powered agitator used for paint mixing. It is important that you're careful to incorporate any materials that may have settled to the bottom. You'll know you're finished when part B has a consistent red appearance. Part A should be mixed with a stir stick that has not come into contact with part B. Simply stir until the contents are well blended. Unscrew the protective caps on the dip tubes and replace them with clean filters. Place the mixed materials in front of the Energy Complete sprayer. As you face the machine, the B container, which is the red material, should go on the right and the A container with the white material on the left. Detach the small flexible recirculation lines from the dip tubes. Tilt the machine backward and roll it forward till the dip tubes are directly over the materials. Then tip it forward till the tubes are resting in the material containers. Take one of your empty containers and place it at the rear of the machine. Then insert the two recirculation lines into the bucket. 
Cut pie-shaped notches in the lids of the A and B containers. Place these back on the containers as shown. To begin preparing the machine, check the pump wet cups fluid. Keep wet cups saturated with Graco ISO pump oil or Graco throat seal liquid, TSL. Now it's time to power up the machine. Begin by placing the A and B valves in the recirculation position, which is pointing from side to side. Be sure the control function knob is turned all the way to the left to the stop position. On the control panel, turn the main power switch on. LEDs will light. Now turn the control knob to the minus position for slow circulation to begin priming. Let this run until there is a consistent flow coming from both the A and B side with no voids or bubbles. The A side will be primed first. When material is flowing, remove the tube and place it in the A material container. When B begins to flow, remove it and place it in the B container. When each side is primed, turn the control function knob back to the stop position. Now turn the A and B valves to the spray position, which is pointing out toward the hoses. Move the waste bucket to the front of the machine. Over the bucket, open the gun manifold valves with a small nut driver. Turn the control knob to the minus position and purge the machine over the waste bucket till material is flowing from both sides. When both lines are flowing, turn off the control knob. Then close both the A and B valves at the manifold. Using the nut driver, attach the manifold to the base of the gun. Then attach the air line to the gun. Reach behind the machine and turn the air compressor on. Set the compressor to about 85 PSI using the knob next to the gauge. Go to the spray gun and select the spray tip that you want to use and install it on the gun. We have some recommendations included in the materials that accompany the machine. Open the air valve on the hose. Turn the function control knob till the pressure on at least one side shows 1200 PSI. If the pressure is not balanced, reduce the pressure on the higher side by gradually turning the valve toward recirculation until the gauges are balanced. Once balanced, adjust the function control till you get a reading of 1,000 to 1,200 PSI. Open the A and B valves at the manifold and disengage the safety on the gun. Now, holding the tip away about 12 inches, spray a pattern on a sheet of cardboard. You will want to assure that you have a consistent pattern and a good pink color. If the pattern is uneven, increase the pressure using the function control till the pattern is even from side to side with no ridges or thin spots. Once the pattern is adjusted, close the manifold valves, trigger the gun to release pressure, and re-engage the safety on the gun. Now you're ready to begin spraying the hole. Be sure you're wearing goggles or a face shield and gloves before beginning to spray. Some installers also prefer to wear disposable coveralls to avoid soiling their clothing, as the foam will stain. Pull the hose into the room where you want to begin and also bring a piece of cardboard for a spray test. Make a final inspection to be certain all doors, windows, tubs and showers and any finished surfaces have been properly covered. Using the nut driver, make certain the gun manifold valves are fully open. Disengage the safety lock. Using the cardboard sheet, make a final test to be certain that you have an even spray. Now you're ready to begin the application. Hold the spray tip about 12 to 18 inches from the wall and pull back the trigger completely. Partially pulling the trigger can clog the gun. Move the gun smoothly along the crack to be sealed. The objective is to apply a narrow bead of foam directly to the crack as shown here without excessive overspray. The tip of the gun can be rotated 90 degrees to permit you to spray with your hand and arm in the most comfortable position. Complete each cavity and then move on to the next until the entire room is completed. 
If you will be climbing ladders or moving from area to area, be sure to re-engage the safety on the gun. These are some specific guidelines as to how to apply the foam in a variety of circumstances. Any penetrations through the band joist to the outside should be treated. The sill plate can be foamed all at once, either before or after the band joist. Any gaps in the sill plate should also be sprayed. The exterior wall cavity should be sprayed at the intersection of the outside sheathing and the bottom and top plates. Only spray what is necessary to seal the intersection. The foamed bead should be between one quarter and one half inch in diameter. Treat the intersection of the bottom plate and the floor sheathing or concrete pad on exterior and interior walls. Again, only spray what is necessary to achieve a seal. Foam all the joints between exterior sheathing sheets. If the gap is greater than one quarter inch, then stuff with fiberglass before spraying. Sometimes the joints between sheathing will have horizontal 2x4 blocks installed. These must be treated on both the top and the bottom of the block. Spray where multiple studs are used, especially if light can be seen between them. On double top plates, the foam should cover the face of both studs and be one quarter inch thick. It is best if the top plate in a room is sprayed all at once to prevent irregularities. The top plates will be treated on the interior walls of the top floor and all exterior walls. All exterior wall corners also will be foamed. If electrical boxes have a large gap between the back surface and the outside sheathing, then stuff the gap area with fiberglass insulation. Then treat with foam to form an air seal. Interior and exterior walls will generally have many pipe penetrations. If the gap around a pipe is greater than one half inch, then use fiberglass as a filler before spraying with foam. Otherwise, simply spray the perimeter of the pipe. Air duct penetrations are frequently found with large gaps around the ductwork. The gap area should be filled with fiberglass and then coated with foam. Wire penetrations that are through the bottom plate or top plates must be filled with foam. If the gap is greater than one half inch, fill with fiberglass first. Keep in mind that local codes may require a fire stop material to fill these holes. The spray foam is not a fire stop. In general, penetrations through vertical studs do not have to be filled. However, in corners, these holes do need to be filled. Windows and doors are often sources of significant air leakage. Cavities above and below the windows are treated as standard cavities. All multiple studs should be sprayed on the face. There are other unique applications that are included in the manual that accompanied the Energy Complete Sprayer. These include studs used as return ducts, garage bump outs, walkout basements, and more. Refer to the manual for additional information. When you're finished with the installation, close the gun manifold valves and engage the safety. The same procedure should be followed if you won't be using the gun for five minutes or longer.